hello, welcome to episode 18 of the Zines and Roger Crochet Vlogcast. I'm Rosina and I'm here today to talk to you, as usual, about all things crochet and some things that aren't about crochet, probably, inevitably, that will happen. I'm coming to you from Devon in the southwest of the UK and I've been here for about 20 years. Oh no, 18. It's, it's, it's been about 18. Which is... I don't know, I can't do the maths. Nearly half my life. I'll probably do the maths in a minute and go, no it's not, it's wrong. Um, anyway, whatevs. So, I've got to stop saying that as well because that's rubbish. So, how are you? You alright? How's it going? I'm okay. I've got some sort of crochet news or crochet things that I've been up to, so I'll start with those. I went to Stitchfest Southwest on Saturday. That's in Totnes, which is about a 40 minutes drive from me. It was lovely. It really was lovely. Um, it's only my second year on festival. Um, to attend that I've attended. I know that there's loads all around the country um, but I've not sort of never really sort of got my ass in gear quite frankly to, to to go to any of them. They're always just anything sort of I think anything over a couple of hours like that would mean I'd have to organise accommodation and then then for the for the sake of some wool skeins, do I want to spend that much money? Because you, you double it if you end up like forking out money for a hotel. However, things are changing because it's not just a question of going to meander around some stalls. You are potentially now meeting friends that I've met online and stuff like that, and that's a whole different ball game, isn't it? It's no longer just spending sort of an hour walking around a place and going I've bought these three things and now I'm going to go home it's an event I suppose and I and I kind of got that when I went to my first yarn festival which was Edinburgh in March but I still was on the cusp I suppose I, I'd only done two two podcasty vlog type things before didn't feel like I deserved to put myself into the throng of all of that social sociable side of it but I was just talking to my sister last night she lives in Edinburgh which is why I went to the Edinburgh Yarn Festival this year as my first festival because it was easy because she was there already and we made a little mini break of it um, I was talking to her last night and we are talking about going for t 2018 um, probably on the Sunday because she's working well she's working on it doesn't matter. I don't need to bore you with the details. The 17th we're thinking about going on. Anyway, so back to Stitch Fest. It's, it's interesting to see the difference between a local festival and a massive one. Um, but it's not to its detriment. It was, it was be beautifully well run, really well organised. It uh, was over two separate um, locations but both within a stone's throw um, a, a wonderful array of vendors um, loads of different sorts of yarn didn't see any mohair I was hoping for some mohair but I didn't see any um, some well-known people people that you've probably heard of if you're into hand-dyed indie yarns and whatnot and then lots of other things like tools and equipment and like project bags and all sorts of things were there. I mean, it was just small scale of what you would expect at one of the bigger ones. But it's in its infancy. And uh, considering that, I think they did a bloody good job actually. It was um it looked like it was really flawlessly run and stuff. You couldn't fault it on that on that at all. Um, the only thing that bugged me was that, and it's not its fault, it was the um, the weather. And it was nice, but the sun, because it's we're now getting into winter, it was really low-lying. And it was beaming into the main hall, 
and you couldn't see the colours of the yarn. Not really, I mean you could if you sort of shielded your face and stuff like that, but you just want to go and then be faced with it and not have to worry about that. But in the other hall, which is a new school hall, um, it was perfect, perfect. So yes, I did buy stuff, but I didn't go crazy. I thought I was pretty sensible actually. Um, I've started using some already and I think I've pretty much wound everything. I was gonna leave it, I was trying to wait until today so I could show you the skeins, but um, no, I spent all day, um, not all day, I um, I did, I just thought, I've got the winder out, I may as well just do them all, so I did them all. And I did, I, I chatted to some people when I was there as well, which is good, it's really funny. I, I just walked in the door, like I'd been there for a few minutes, and um, someone came up to me um, and said hello, which was lovely, and I was like, hello, because we know each other from Instagram, and she recognised my face. Um, she's called Miss Moffat, and I'll... And um, I don't know where you live actually, but um, it, might, it can't be far away, it's somewhere in the southwest, isn't it? Um, and then I met, and it was so it's lovely to chat to you. And I met um, a lady called Becky who runs a company called Dartmoor, the Dartmoor Yarn Company, and she had a store there. And so we had a nice meet up because we've been chatting for about a year online, and um, it's so nice. It's I didn't I know people say this all the time, but it is honestly completely normal. Like I might have been a bit rude, but not to her. Just made a rude joke, which was, it was funny. It wasn't. It wasn't horrible. I don't mean rude as in horrible. I mean rude as in haha. Um, but it is normal when you meet somebody that you've been chatting to online. It feels like you actually know them. And I know. Yeah, people say that all the time, but I didn't expect it. So yeah, fab. Um, so I don't think there's much I can say about that other than that um, I really hope it continues because sometimes the South West sort of gets a raw deal. We're left out of all sorts of things because we're poked down in the corner. We do our own thing, such as star barrels. That was very messy. I, I was going to write a blog post about it the other day, but all my pictures are just smear of orange against black. It just, you can't tell what anything is at all. I think the best bet is to um, look on, look online, and just type in tar barrels. If you really, if you want to see some really professional footage and stuff like that, there's some fantastic videos on there. And even on Instagram, if you put in tar barrels uh, as a hashtag or Ottery St Mary, loads of stuff pops up and people have done like, mini videos of barrels rushing past. There was a slow-mo one I saw the other day and it was fabulous. I wish I'd, I didn't, I didn't make a note of it. But yeah, it was messy. I did not feel very well the next day. I was very ashamed of myself for getting quite, quite in that state. But I was talking to a friend of mine about it on the Monday after the event and she said that it was justifiable because it's the law. If you're in Ottery St Mary and you go to the tar barrels, you have to get drunk. You can't not. Um, it is expected and if you don't then... What's wrong with you? God. No, last year I went and I was stone cold, stone cold sober. You can do it both ways. I'm, I'm not, not trying to... I was ashamed, okay? Let's just draw a line. Anyway, Halloween was good too. We went trick or treating for the first time. I, I, I went as a child when nobody else did. I think there were a couple of times my mum must have arranged for us to knock on three neighbours' doors and give us sweets or something. But it never used to be big. And I was always envious um, of those in America because you'd watch um, E.T. and C. All just the whole neighbourhood out trick-or-treating and having a fabulous time um, it was never ever like that but it it kind of is getting that way now which is which is brilliant and I dressed up there weren't many other parents dressed up but to be honest with you I don't care when it comes to stuff like that I'll just do what I want 
Um, so I had a magician and a skeleton and I was a witch and we went down the road and knocked on all the doors that had pumpkins. We must have been out for a good hour and that was enough to have enough sweets for three, four nights of scoffing after school and um, yeah it was really funny because for years my elders have said I don't want to go it sounds horrible I don't want to do this thing and then my youngest who's four was well up for it and wanted to do it and so I was like we are going I don't care um, you will enjoy it I know you will and needless to say yes he came back and he's like I love trick-or-treating mummy I want to go every year <laughs> I knew that you'd love it so he just doesn't like dressing up and so he ba he wore a hat and a cape, no no face paint or anything, but the other one was he loves dressing up. So that was that was easy. And me, I think it's the bee's knees. I love getting into costume, it's fabulous. Um always have. And I've got yeah, well for those that watched last episode you would have seen my some of the stuff in my dressing up box. But funnily enough, I think because I had a spider on the the thumbnail, it looked like it was going to be a spider tutorial, and no, nobody's watched <laughs> episode 17. Um, less than half my normal views. So honestly, it's not about it's not loads about spiders or Halloween, but there's a slight smattering throughout the episode. So if you wanted to go back and watch that one, it is a normal episode. It just so happens that I'm wearing either a witch's tiara or antlers. They called ant I was calling them horns last time, wasn't I? And then it wasn't until I was watching it back going, they're antlers, you fool. Anyway. Um, so that was good. Halloween was good. Not, um, go back and watch it. Or not, you don't have to. Um, so yeah, anyway, that's probably, I think, oh no, I was gonna say that's it for news, but it's not really because I thought I'd mention that I did put I put a twenty percent discount on my Etsy store. Um, there's I don't know how many things, maybe about sixteen things in there, um, blankets and and a couple of shawls and a shawl and a scarf and stuff. So if you wanted to get some sort of gifty thing for somebody for Christmas, twenty percent off until the sixteenth of November. Um, so far, nobody's bought anything. I don't. I, sp I suppose. It, I mean, I have sold stuff in there before, but as I said, as I said in the past, I don't market it very well, and I just rely on people stumbling across it and going, "Oh yay!" But I'm not really sure how to market it because that's not my main thingy. It just so happens to be because I like making so much. I've obviously got surplus, so anyway, so there's that. So there's another week, isn't there, until that dies, um, and then a lot of the stuff goes out. Uh, it, the the listing expires on the 4th of December, so not long. And then I think my, I might just shut up, shut it up, give up, not sure, don't know what to do. Which leads me on to, you know, do you know, do you ever buy patterns from lovecrochet.com? Because I usually buy, if I'm going to buy a pattern, I'll buy it from Ravelry and then sometimes at Etsy. Um, but... I hear more and more about lovecrochet.com and I was wondering if anybody actually bought patterns pat from there. Um, I was, I did begin to set it up but I couldn't work out how to do it. I don't know how to do it. I know how to add a project like um, you've made somebody else's project but I kind of did it for my projects so I've made my own projects. But I don't know how to put patterns up there for sale. I, it doesn't, it's not user friendly. And also it's very slow. Out of all the websites that you can do those sorts of things with, it chugs away really slowly. I don't know, maybe I, I mean, do you think I should bother? What shall I do? I don't know. Um, I, I'll have to research it probably. I didn't exactly do mega, mega research. The other thing I was going to tell you is that I would like to give away some Christmas presents. Do you want a Christmas present? It's because I've got loads of stash basically, 
So I'm not going to go out of my way and buy and spend money and buy lots of presents. But if you would like to have a Christmas present as sort of for me getting rid of some of my wool, and it will all be new balls of wool, it won't be my, my scraps, it will be probably have have ball bands on and stuff like that so it's um and i will sort of try and do mix and match but i was thinking about giving away two two christmas presents and i think what i'll do is pick one and just pick them at random from the comments in the feed on youtube and i will open up a ravelry thread which i haven't mentioned that i'll do the ravelry thread I'll probably forget, so I better write it down. Ravelry thread. I'll do. I'll and one. And I'll pick a winner from Ravelry and one from YouTube. So you must um, join the Themes and Roger group on Ravelry if you want to. If you want to comment on there, and you must be a subscriber on YouTube and comment and comment on both about what you want for Christmas. If you could have anything you wanted, what would it be? And I'm not talking like, well, peace, because yeah, that's obvious. Wouldn't it be nice if we were all mates? But what do you actually want? Physical, lusty, or not lusty. <laughs> it doesn't have to be lusty. Something you, yeah, something you really covet. I want to know what that is. Tell me. And then I'll do, I'll do a draw for there, draw for there and I'll send off a, a Christmas present to two people. Um, and and I can get rid of some of my stuff and then you can have a present as well. Does that sound okay? Have you seen this? I don't know if you can see it because it's far away. And if I go like this, you won't be able to see it anyway because um, it'll be blurry by the time I do that, won't it? It arrived the other day, when did I do it? Two days ago maybe? And it is a present from Claudia from Crochet Luna, who I'm sure you know. And I'm sure if you watch her podcast, vlogcast, Crochet Vid, um, you will know that she had some enamel pins designed because there were loads of knitting ones and not very many crochet ones. So she has designed ones as crochet loving Sisters, yarn loving crochet sisters, and it's a granny square, and it's awesome. Um, I believe that she's got some other ideas up her sleeves for enamel pins, which I think is just brilliant. It's a fab idea, and this was a complete surprise. I was, I, 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 um, I haven't started Christmas shopping or anything like that, and I did wonder if I was going to get well Christmas shopping. It's going to get one for myself, um, but um, I got a surprise parcel in the post. Thank you, Claudia. Love it. I'm going to have to start an enamel pin collection. I've only got three and they're all from Claudia. <laughs> um, I don't know. It's sort of becoming a thing now. And I've seen a couple on Instagram that I want. And I never even thought to buy them before. But now I might have to add them to my shopping list. And then start a collection. People put them on their project bags and stuff, don't they? And this, this one will probably end up on one of my project bags, I think. But for today, I'm wearing it. Keep rubbing, rubbing. Sorry. Um, Claudia is selling them on Etsy, so if you fancy becoming a crochet loving yarn sister, yarn loving crochet sister, which you already are, then you can grab yourself one of those. Um, and she did mention in her latest podcast vlogcast that um, her next design. Um, will not just be for the sisters, it will be for the brothers as well. Everybody. Inclusive. Hmm. So, uh, do you want to know what else I got? Do you want to know what I got from Stitch Fest Southwest? I got, and it's already wound, as I said, and therefore I've probably, I'm probably going to get it all mixed up. But, um, I got quite a lot of neutrals with splashes of colour in. Those were my go-tos. Um, 
and this one was unplanned but I just fell in love with it and I I don't know if you can if it's what are cakes as beautiful to look at as skeins do you think because the skeins to me are swoon swoony swoonsville whereas a cake I'm like you can't see how the I don't know. I mean, this is probably more true, isn't it? This is how it's going to work up. But anyway, this one I absolutely fell in love with. Um, it is the, the the most spontaneous purchase I made. And I think it is um, unbelievable. Which is that. And I will put all the details and the links for everything. This one's called Game Changer. It's, I think it's probably naked but then they put the splashes of pink, orange and black on it. It was just, it jumped out a mile for me. There was another one that was beautiful there as well, but um, I wasn't there to be crazy and splashy outy. I was there with specific things in mind. Um, and therefore, I think... I've lost a label. These two... Ooh. Um... I bought to to make another holy smoke shawl and they're by um hand dyed by kate one of them's called windswept and i don't know which one it is sorry um everything i bought i think was a four ply merino nylon mix don't think i veered away from that as i said i wanted to get a mohair one but didn't see any um just just to sort of go a bit crazy um, so yeah, these are probably going to go towards working on another Holy Smokes shawl and because I said I wanted more grown up colours, I wasn't going to go, um, I did, by grown up I didn't mean boring, so you know, it'll be anything but, um, but I was thinking of putting them together, you see, in some way. And maybe just, I think my original Holy Smokes has got four colours, but maybe just working with the three and and having a play with those. So that's one project. And then, and I got all those. No, Hand, Hand Dyed by Kate was in the main hall. And then the other one was in the school hall. Not that it matters. Oh no, who's that one? Oh, that's that one. Right, so that's what I bought and then I also got, and I've and I've cracked into this already, Devon's on Yarns, which I know has been very popular, was very popular at Yarndale and maybe another festival as well, recently. Um, there was an orange in here as well, which I've caked up because it'll go I'm going to show you that in a minute, work in progress. So a lot of minutes of minis. I want to add splashes of colour here and there to projects and sometimes I don't have the colours I want and I thought it would be good to have them. There, waiting, ready. So um, those are those things. And then the, the other thing, I bought two cakes of something called a splash of toad, which is cool, cool name, and that's Bellica Yarns, a splash of toad, which I think is a fabulous uh, name. And I'm using it as my main colour. This is it. I bought two skeins of that. And then I think that those were my purchases. That is it. So I didn't, I don't think that's crazy. Is that crazy? It's not crazy, is it? So I've got two of that. This is splash of toad. It's yellow with some greeny bits, orangey bits, browny bits, which I do think I said I was after, didn't I? I wasn't necessarily going to have a pale yellow base. I was maybe going to have a more neutral base, maybe a pale grey or something. But this was my favourite when I was looking. And so it's what I've gone for. And I've already started working it up. And I am working it into a shawl. And I don't remember what episode it was, but I said about doing a stash busting project, didn't I? Um, 
with all the leftover bits from other projects and whatnot. So I feel like I'm slouchy today. Mm. It's raining. What a miserable day. Um, I showed you a bag filled with all my leftover skeins from projects like the Blur, um, and the Three Springs and other projects I've worked on that I can't remember the names of right now. Holy Smokes as well. And, oh yeah, and the Open Stripe. All those yarns from, from those things. So you can't see, I'm sorry, I never know where to position the camera. And I might be sat here crocheting, but you can't see. So what I'm doing is making a shawl using all my bits and then having a base colour and crossing my fingers that it will look smashing when it's finished. So, if I mean, I've got all sorts of colours in here going from, that's from Holy Smokes, that's from the Urban Stripe, this is from the Blur Shawl, my Blur, um, that's from the Blur, that, this is um, When Dye Pots Attack by, made by Jude, and, and Jude was there, and I, and I, my sister was wearing my blur and I said this is yours this bit's yours and she's like oh that was nice she's got some lovely colored things lovely things but and I would have bought some more when dye pots attack because um, there was one that it was it was the same colors that she'd used but obviously it comes out different every time and the way it looked was superb um, <clears throat> but I was just like you can't buy more the same stuff stop it <laughs> so I wasn't allowed anyway um all sorts of things in there from several different projects and and this is see that I've caked up um this one Devon Sun Yarns and it's going to go in and what I've done so far is this and it is the beginnings of a of a shawl and it's going to have varied stitches in I don't know if you can see I've got some different different stitches in there to add a bit of interest and what I'm going to do is as you can probably tell main colour and my leftovers and they're all going to go in and be stripes and because it's it's like an ultimate stash bust yeah and it's all from past projects and so the name of it is long story and hopefully it will be quite long but each yarn I'm using is going to have a memory attached to it and a story about it I'll be able to say oh this is when I made blah blah and you, do you have that thing like when you make something if you get it out again you see it you go I remember when I made that I was watching that film and now it's forever associated with that film you watched like my hexy blanket I started watching um, which I haven't picked up since last time um, a fortnight ago I picked it up then didn't I um, but the first time I was make, working on that I was watching the first series of Outlander so when I got it out after it being away for two months it immediately triggered the Outlander memory and um, my son's blankie that he carries everywhere around with him reminds me of going to <laughs> it reminds me of going on holiday. It <laughs> the Hay Valley, Hay no, why Valley? <laughs> we didn't, we went to Hay and Why actually, but um, we didn't stay in Hay and We stayed in somewhere else in the Why Valley. Obviously, that memory's um, well triggered. <laughs> um, but it does remind me of the holiday accommodation we were at, and it reminds me of the annoying donkeys that were right outside and woke me up when I was trying to sleep when I was six weeks pregnant making the blankie for him didn't know if it's going to be a girl or a boy at six weeks obviously so he's got a very jazzy blankie which he's absolutely in love with um, stuff like that so it's a story I'm making a story which I think is a lovely idea so that is my current work in progress and it will be a pattern I will make 
make it into a pattern and I, I'm, I'm really hoping that I'm going to love it but the, you start making it thinking yes this is the design I'm interested in this is the design that I want this is how I want it to look and then you start making it and you just think oh the placement of the stripes might, could be different the stitches could be different I could do this I could do that the variations are endless and you start thinking about all these other things that you can do and it's quite frustrating I wish I could just just go stop no this is the blank this is the the design this is what you you have made stop thinking about all the variations and the possibilities that that, that could kind of transpire from doing this um but also at the same time you want to make three four different versions because you never know which one's going to be the most beautiful they'll all end up being pretty and i like them but there'll always be a what if what if i'd changed the the depth of it, what if I'd changed the width of certain stripes, what if I'd mixed the colours up a bit more, what if I'd done this, blah blah blah. Um, but for now I'm just going to stick to what I've planned and then I can always go off piece off, off piece afterwards, can't I? My battery's flashing already which must mean I've been, I've already been blathering for far too long but I've still got more stuff to show you. So I don't know whether I should. I don't know how long a, fl a battery flashes for until, until you know, it dies. So I'm going to work on this, and then maybe next episode it will be finished. And I, I want to block it. I think it will come alive when it's blocked. And I've been working on uh, another project as well, and I don't have any finished, finished projects this week. The other project I've done is almost finished. I just need to put it together. And that's, um, that is the third colour block jumper. And I'm never making another one again. I'm sick of it. <laughs> I'm only doing this one because um, it was a very special birthday request. One that I had to fulfil. So, um, I'll show you that. I'll show oh my God. I will show you that next. One moment, please. So the colour block jumper. Do you know what, I, obviously I'm wearing mine. I absolutely love these jumpers. They are, they they look good, they are, they fit well, they are supremely warm and comfortable and the alpaca is not scratchy, not really. It would be if I was, um, uh, if I didn't have a long sleeve t-shirt on, probably. Um, my 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 biggest complaint about the colour block jumper is that when you're walking down the street the wind whistles through the holes and it does get a bit chilly but if you're at home and it's a cold day it's the snuggest option I have I think and I am not cold wearing it and it's and it we've had frost and all sorts recently so it is cold. All my bits are done um, they are done. There is a sleeve. There is a sleeve. And then I have a front and a back. That's the back. And as you can see, I've used the mustard again, but I've gone with a, a, the this is not the same yarn, it is the same brand, it is Drops, but this is Drops Merino DK, not Alpaca DK, and I probably would have made this in, in the Merino, have to say, if only because the Merino superwash and won't felt like this one's slightly felted now, as I talked about in another episode. Um, I'm going to have to block this one though. I made the size smaller and I think the yarn, um, the yarn was, wasn't like for like capture. I was going to say it was like for like, it's not, like the swatch was weirdly the same depth but the stitches didn't measure as, as wide as the alpaca. So I don't know why it's the same depth, I don't understand. But I kind of just, I just went for it, I was like, do you know what? I will not worry about 
about it. I will just make a size smaller, assuming that it will come up the size smaller than this one. And that's what my sister and I discussed, because she is smaller than me. She's probably about two or three even. She's... I don't know. I don't suppose she wants me to talk about her size. But she's she's a good couple of sizes smaller than me, but her arms, she's got mammoth, <laughs> she's got mammoth arms, I'm really sorry. <laughs> um, she's got big biceps, She's um, she does more exercise than me, she's a cyclist, and um, I don't know what makes your arms bigger, it does. Why her arms are bigger at the moment is because she spent the last three months going around on crutches because she's had a knee operation, which has nothing to do with cycling, something to do with messing about doing something else silly. Um, so I'm going to block it because I wrapped it around her arm when she was here on Saturday and um, they'd come from Edinburgh to come and do the tar barrels, watch the tar barrels. So when I did wrapped it around her arm, it, it, would, it was, it's going to be tight so I'm going to have to block all these pieces and then it'll fit perfectly but it's just like oh I can't be bothered <laughs> it's, I think if it had been a new pattern if I hadn't done anything before I think the enthusiasm would still be there but because it's something I've done twice before neither time did I have to bother blocking it it just it's sort of it's an effort <sighs> I'm gonna obviously I will do it but I was gonna try and do it for weekend gone so that she could take it back with her it hasn't happened, so now I'm just going to put it down for a week, and then I'll maybe next week I'll I'll do the blocking and sort it out. But once it's blocked, I will then do the neckline and all the seams. So there's that. Those are my two projects. That's all I've gotten at the moment. I've just posted off um, a secret commission. I've also just got another commission to do. I've done lots and lots of sketches for, I say lots and lots, I do loads of sketches and then I go, do I want to make this? No. Do I want to make this? No. Do I want to make this? Yes, I want to make that one. I've actually um, gone from like six months ago to throwing throwing as many patterns as I could, sorry I keep my face a bit close down, isn't it? throwing as many patterns as I could at people going, which one do you like? I'm, go I'm actually sort of saying, I'm going to submit the ones that I really like because if I'm not keen, why should they be keen? Whoever it may be that I send them to. So basically, it, I've changed my rule rather than throwing ten, not ten things, but you know, sev what, rather than throwing several things at somebody and seeing which one sticks, I'm just going to submit the ones that I'm really enthusiastic about and would actually really enjoy making. And so that means that um, I think over three different companies, I only did two per two per thingy, two per brief or something. Um, I don't. There's one already. I don't think I've got um, actually two of those same person because I haven't heard anything. But one of them will become an independent design anyway because I think it's smashing and then I've just sent off to the other day fingers crossed at least one of those um, will get picked because I'm in love with it and again if that doesn't come to fruition I will do it myself anyway and then I'm working on some more at the minute for uh, another one and at this stage I'm um, just sketching and doing so many things, so many ideas that it's you have, I'm going to have to sort the wheat from the chaff. And also, I think probably later on I'm going to do some research and try and go out of my comfort zone a bit. But I'm not sure if I'm ready. Don't know. So, yeah. And the other thing I've been doing this week, I've got a splinter. Where did that come from? Oh. The other thing I've been doing this week is working on the Holy Smokes. Would you like to patent test it? If you want to patent test it, can pop along to the Ravelry thread for patent testers. I know there's a couple of people on there already, some of whom might have come along after I requested patent testers last time. 
so I might just get in touch with those guys anyway but if you are interested in testing holy smokes please do give me a shout um, it's this one it would be great to see it in different colours. I mean, mine are quite out there. I, I, every time I look at it, it makes me smile. Um, but I would love to see different variations. Whatever, I mean, the best thing to do is that if you've got some four ply in stash already, I think only two of them need to be nearly full skeins. The other two, I think you can get away with about 50, less than 50 grams. Um, then ideal give us a shout if you want to use them for the holy smokes uh obviously you know i would i would post uh, forward you the 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 draft pattern which will hopefully be as accurate as possible but i won't find that and found i won't find out that until you guys help me um but you get the pattern for free and then you get another pattern of your choice as well as a thank you um, once it's been tested and um, yeah um, if you if yeah if you are a confident crocheter and quick then I would be really really grateful if you would pattern test for me that'd be amazing thanks um, it's not like the hardest pattern in the world, but to get that cross, um, I've rewritten patterns that I've already found, and hopefully I've rewritten it in a more kind of, it, well, certainly in a way I think is more straightforward, and I, and I hope that my brain works the same as yours, so you would also find it straightforward. Does that make sense? So, yes, please do give me a shout on Ravelry, on the Pattern Testers thread. Um, that would be awesome. I'm sort of looking for about four or five people, I suppose. Um, and, and also, don't be offended if I publish it before you've finished it. Um, it's no reflection on you at all. It just means I've had feedback from other people and, or, you know, at least two or three other people and I've made the decision that that is good good enough to go ahead and publish and um, that's why sort of, that's why I ask sort of more than um, I need because hopefully that means I'll get results quicker so don't so don't be offended if, if that's the case I mean I, it doesn't matter because no matter when I get that feedback it's still super um, useful and and it, and it might even mean things like, um, you know, if you putting putting it on um, Instagram or putting your progress on Ravelry or whatever, if other people see that, then that is really helpful too. That's how it works in my mind. So um, if you fancy making it, then that would be amazing. Thank you very, very much. So what have we got to remember, pattern testers? Christmas giveaway. Would you like a Christmas present? Don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe. Get me out. Get me out there. Um, I've lost my notes. Where have I put my notes? Oh, there they are. Um, so Christmas present. Go and get yourself a badge. Don't forget the discount on Etsy if you fancy buying something or telling other people that I'm there. That's it. Thank you very much. Um, did I did I do okay today? I mean, I, I, you know, I, I felt I not I'm not off colour, but I'm very tired. Can you tell? Do I look tired? I feel tired. Um, I'll be I'll be back on form next time. I'm sure. Uh, yeah thank you for joining me um please comment and say hello because i love that and i'll see you next time thank you very much cheerio bye bye